Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show, we're going to announce the winners of this past week, Community Question of the Week, which was, what do you think about the Guardian Gala event? Was it any better than the previous two? And just so that I don't keep you guys waiting for too long, Let's go into random.org and uh, see what random numbers we get. Uh, remember, we get two prizes, one Omega Combo clone each per winner. And the first winner is Beastman. Very disappointed by the Gala event. Encounters took so long to complete flying from station to station that I gave up on them. Spending Plex to unlock the rewards was a major turnoff as well. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, congratulations for winning one Omega Combo clone. Let's move on to our next winner. And random.org spews out 64. And 64 is... Ooh! <laughs> Fellow Romanian, Alexandru Angel. The event was just a filler. And even worse, the key feature kind is greedy, but is for cosmetics, so no problem with that. And if we don't want to spend Plex for random skins, then we can buy skins we want for ISK from market. So no problem. The encounters in event lack lore to back them up. Or if there is lore, I don't know where to find it. The game needs time. Time to develop and time to settle and players need patience. Hard to have when we have monthly subscription, but the Plex to ISK system is good. And for mobile, is kinda innovative. I don't know if other games have such a system. Hope they do something with the storyline to be shorter. As for mobile games, I fell asleep as well. And sometime, real life issues pop up and have to abruptly abort mission. Both winners had some really valid points. Now, the Guardian Goal event was, in my opinion, no better than the previous ones. Uh, I think if I consider all the events together, uh, we criticized the Halloween event. Uh, it was actually the best of them all. In hindsight, basically what happened is it offered the players to either engage in PvP and to do with stuff. The critique that was left for the Halloween event was the fact that anyone could come and steal your stuff. Now that has been fixed, but it was taken to the extreme. Basically, everything is just running encounters and getting some loot boxes. But the cherry on the top in a bad way for this event was the fact that we had keys, which were optional, of course. But if you really wanted to get something premium like a permanent skin, you had to use a key, which cost 100 plaques, so that's 100 million. Sure, you might get return of investment, but after after every player started spending um, Plex to get those keys, prices dropped considerably for the permanent skins because everyone started having them. Some people might say the event was a cash grab. I say it was not. And why is that? Because everything is optional. Cosmetics are pretty much redundant and kind of pointless in this game. If you consider that most of the time you spend playing is zoomed out and you just see triangles, pixels and dots. No one will see your skin. But the skins are mostly, I don't know, for your entertainment, probably. So it's really optional. There was no cash grab. You could just ignore this event or just do those encounters that popped up constantly. For 5 million, if you do the hard mode encounters, 5 million, 5 million, and 5 million. And there was only one that was a transport mission, and you got like 900,000 ISK. But in my opinion, it was pretty okay. But why was it the worst of them all? Basically, the introduction of the keys upset a lot of people. Now, as I mentioned, it was not a cash grab, everything was optional. In my opinion, uh, skins and cosmetics are kind of pointless. But for people who just, I don't know, like to be completionists and have everything in the game, sure, this looked like a cash grab. And I really wanted to see an event based on lore, yet we don't have such a thing. And we have, just to answer uh, Alexandra's question, we have no lore. Eve Echoes is currently devoid of lore. There's only the bits and pieces of lore made by the game because it's established off of EVE Online, or at least off of the EVE universe. 
but law as in why is Empire X at war with Empire Y? Why is the Kaldari insane about superpower and corporations? Why is the Amar um, so religious? Why the Minmatar hold so many grudges against the Amar? And what's the Galente's purpose in all this? And of course, where is the Jove? And when will we get the sleepers? In my opinion, the developers should actually hire or consider hiring a writer. That would put so many things into perspective. But enough of that, uh, Guardian Gala. Congratulations, Alexandru and Beastman. Uh, please leave a comment below with your in-game name and your character ID so I can pass that information uh, to the people responsible with handing out the prizes. For those of you that didn't manage to receive the prizes yet, uh, that is mostly because uh, the entire office uh, of NetEase is basically on vacation. You know, the Lunar Year, the New, the Chinese New Year, and they're basically on a holiday. But as soon as they will come back, um, everyone should receive everything. Hopefully, if you don't receive or have not received your stuff, please leave a comment below or contact me on Discord and let me know and I'll try to get in touch with Joseph, the community manager, to, to try and sort things out. So, uh, we're going to have yet another giveaway, another Omega com uh, two Omega Combo clones for two randomly picked winners. Stick around till the end of the video and uh, you'll be able to hear the next community question of the week. Until then, let's take a look at what we exactly promised, which is a short review of the eight battleships. And uh, one more important thing, leave a comment below with the battleship that you would like me to review. I'll actually post one of these uh, polls into the community tab on the channel, so you'll be able to vote which one of the battleships you'd like to see reviewed, and I'll probably set up um, multiple fittings for you guys to understand how it works and how it should behave. Considering the votes that will be cast in favor of these battleships, I will take them in the order of voting. So just to get a quick glance at the battleships, the tech line uh, battleships that uh, almost everyone just unlocked. There's still a couple of players that are, that are still behind and will catch up. And of course there's the new players that uh, probably just uh, attack level 6 or so. Or even new players if you are watching the channel that you're probably tech level 3, 4 already in your trainer cruisers. Hope you enjoy and find the information in this video useful for when you will be reaching tech level 9. Let's start off with the Kaldari state. Uh, we've already did uh, ship tree reviews for all the nations. But here we are going to get into a bit of depth uh, and try to understand what a battleship fits and what role. So the first one will be the Scorpion. Now the Scorpion is kind of dumbed down and why is that? Because uh, uh, one of the most important electronic warfare system uh, it has not been yet introduced into the game, which is ECM, Electronic Countermeasures. Now, the Kaldari favor this type of electronic warfare, which is jamming other ships. And jamming, like sensor jamming, completely disrupting the targeting ability. Unfortunately, because ECM is not yet into the game, the ships, uh, the Kaldari ships such as the Griffin, the Blackbird, and including the Scorpion battleships, do not have the bonuses for ECM, but that will probably change. Uh, they did change it, um, so now Scorpion has bonuses for a different type of electronic warfare until ECM gets introduced. So we get 10% Guidance Disruption Strength and 10% Guidance Disruption Optimal Range. Now the Guidance Disruption, if I'm not mistaken, this is only applying to missiles, which is kind of crappy. But there's the other, um, I think this is Minmatar or the Galente, can't remember, we'll get to that, um, basically which have Tracking Disruption. And uh, the Tracking Disruption applies to turrets, but I don't know, it would have been nice to have them unified in a way. We go on, we got 5% scan resolution, meaning uh, you target stuff faster. Considering this is a battleship, uh, you will have, actually all battleships have this disadvantage when it comes to targeting smaller ships. Uh, this bonus helps with that, not that much, but it helps. It's a, it's given by advanced electronic warfare bonus uh, per level. So in level five, uh, you get plus 25% 20, scan resolution. It's not going to target as fast as a Vex Navy issue, for example, because the scan resolution of a battleship is poop. 
but it will definitely help. Uh, as for damage bonuses, we got Battleship Command bonus per level, 15% turret damage and 15% missile torpedo damage. Meaning you can fit this in hybrid, uh, it's not in hybrid, it's not a hybrid ship, but you can basically choose uh, depending on what skills you have or want to invest into. You can either fit this with turrets or you can fit this with missiles. So this would be a pretty okay-ish ship. Unfortunately, the guidance disruption electronic warfare is kind of crappy. So in my opinion, you'd better off just... Uh, collecting the Raven. Uh, let's take a look at a bit of the fly velocity, 121 meters per second, and let's switch to the Raven. Um, just a quick glance is flight velocity 112, so the Scorpion is indeed faster. The Raven is pretty much the standard battleships, like it can be either a brawler or a like sniper using long range missiles, depends on what you want uh, to go for. But he has a good tank, a, and it's a highly versatile ship, considering it's a slow-moving battleship. We got uh, Large Missile Torpedo Operation bonus per level, 5% uh, Large Missile Torpedo damage, minus 5% Large Missile Torpedo Activation time, and Large Missile Torpedo Velocity plus 5%, and it has 7 high slots. So this would be your primary damage dealer if you're going into battleships using missiles. And of course, per battleship command bonus per level, you get 5% flight velocity. So this will be your primary Kaldari damage dealer in terms of missiles. And if you want to go with that, Raven is your ideal choice. Switching over to the next uh, faction, we've got the Amar Empire. We've got two battleships um, that are really good. We've got the Armageddon and the Apocalypse. Uh, first, we'll do the Armageddon. We've got 10%. Uh, per level of advanced electronic warfare bonus, um, we've got 10% energy Nosferatu optimal range and 10% energy neutralizer optimal range. These bonuses don't match up with the rest of the tree because the Arbitrator, actually none of the, um, the Mars ships have a proper energy Nosferatu and uh, energy neutralizer um, electronic warfare bonus. Basically, uh, if you played Evil Line, uh, the curse would fit into the Amar tech tree Basically, the curse ha has been removed. Also, the pilgrim, and even though uh, even the arbitrator covert ops does not have proper bonuses for energy neutralizer and energy nosferatu. So, the bonuses on the Armageddon will, will, were kept from Eve Online, but they don't match up with the rest of the tree in Eve Echoes. We got 445 as a slot loader, and it tends to be a drone ship. Look at we got four drone hard points. And for battleship command bonus per level, we got 40% drone DPS. It fits heavy drones, by the way. You can fit heavy drones, actually. Plus 5% drone EHP and plus 6 kilometers drone control range. Now, by any means, this does not mean <laughs> that it tries to rival with the Dominics. We'll get to the Dominics soon. But it is a good ship nonetheless, considering the electronic warfare bonuses to Energy Neutralizer and Energy Nosferatu is a good support battleship, which uses drones as well. Moving on to the Apocalypse, which basically is the power horse of the Amar Navy fleet. Uh, we've got uh, per large laser operation of plus 7.5% large la laser optimal range and 7.5% large laser tracking speed. It's got 8 high slots, uh, which is a bigger number than the Raven. <laughs> I don't know why is this um, imbalance. Maybe the missiles are dealing more damage than the, um, than the lasers. Or just to consider the fact that lasers do mostly electromagnetic damage. Uh, while the missiles uh, deal a, an even spread of 25 across all resistances. With only 3 med slots and 6 low slots, uh, this ship is basically devoid of supporting mechanisms. So it really relies on other ships for support. It's mostly a damage deal and a good tank. And it can also be used for sniping because of alpha damage. And uh, we've got a couple of more uh, battleships that are good for alpha damage. We'll get to them in a moment. Battleship command bonus per level get 5% scan resolution, the same as the Scorpion. So it should be able to target faster, so that's why it's a good 
sniping ship as well. And by just taking a quick look at the attributes, we can clearly see that the flight velocity is bigger than the Raven. <laughs> so higher number of high slots are plus more speed. This means that probably the Raven will be more favored as a stationary weapons platform, while the Apocalypse does feel that sits quite perfectly in the role of Sniper. Moving on to the next faction, which is the Minmatar Republic. And on the Minmatar Republic we have the Typhoon and the Tempest, and we're going to take them in that order, which is a bit reversed, but I really want to touch on the Typhoon. Basically has the same high slots number as the Raven and, well, it's a missile boat. It has 5% a per large missile torpedo operation uh, level. It has 5% large missile minus 5% large missile torpedo activation time and plus 5 large missile torpedo explosion velocity. Now, the explosion velocity is good, but uh, not that great when um, facing smaller and faster uh, targets. It will help, but not by that much. But it will probably be better with uh, rapid heavy missile launches than the Raven, because the Raven has no explosion velocity bonus at all. So you'll probably need some rigs, some modules, uh, in order to get the Raven to the same explosion velocity that the, the Typhoon can, uh, can get to. But it's obvious that the typhoon suffers in damage but i think it compensates in speed oh my god look at that 146 meters per second that's 20 meters per second actually 30 meters per second 34 to be precise better than the raven this means the ship is faster and if you probably has better agility as well so if you, if you equip it with prop mods it'll definitely uh, run faster than the Raven. Now we got 5% scan resolution, just the same as the uh, Scorpion and the uh, Apocalypse. So in case you're going with uh, Minmatar, this e and Minmatar with uh, missiles, this is probably uh, your best bet in terms of Tech Novel 9 battleships. And moving on to the Tempest. The Tempest is an amazing ship. Uh, it's kept pretty much its stats from even line. Uh, I didn't see any modifications. There's a bit of uh, no, touches here and there, but most importantly has seven high slots, four mid slots and six low slots. It looks like it's a bit better than the Typhoon because of the extra mid slot, while the high slot and the low slot stay the same. Now it does have seven high slots, which is one less than the Apocalypse, but we all know that the cannons deal incredible damage and have extremely good alpha strike if you fit it with strike cannons, of course. So this thing right here is excellent also for brawling if you fit it with auto cannons and excellent for sniping if you fit it with strike cannons. We got a uh, large cannon operation bonus per level, we get 5% large cannon damage and battleship command bonus per level, we get minus 4% large cannon activation time. So both the, these bonuses, uh, both these stats uh, improve uh, the DPS, which can get pretty decent. There's no other bonuses in terms of um, other things, like scan resolution and other stuff, but it does pack a punch when fit as a sniper. And the speed is also good, we got 136 meters per second. By the way, we won't go into any more details with the stats, because we'll do full reviews of the ships themselves. Of course, uh, once you guys vote, please remember to vote in the community tab. There'll be a poll with the battleships. Which one would you like to see first? And I'll take them in the order of biggest votes to the smallest votes and showcase them and show you guys good fits, interesting fits and uh, probably strategies as well. So moving over to the last faction, which is the Galente Federation. We've got two battleships there sitting on tier 9. We've got the Mighty Dominics and the Megatron. Now we've already reviewed a bit the Dominics in the past. We've seen on the test server uh, a brawling fit. It was kind of interesting to see the Dominics act like one because has drone range bonus but we all know how slow heavy drones can be so just sitting at 70 kilometers it might take forever for the drones to get to the intended target might as well just go with uh sentry drones but sentry drones are kind of poop 
and they're kind of retarded. And why is that? Well, uh, I think we'll get to why the Sentry Dones are shit uh, when we'll do the Dominic's review. Well, let's take a look at its stats. We've got uh, large drone operation bonus per level, 40% extra drone DPS, pretty much the same bonuses as the Armageddon, but it has five uh, drone tubes. <laughs> so this means extra damage, <laughs> a lot of extra damage. And 5% drone optimal range and 5% drone tracking speed. And a battleship command bonus per level will get plus 10%, uh, sorry, plus 10 kilometer drone control range. So level 5 battleship command, you will get an additional 50 kilometers in total as drone control range. Which is kind of neat, it's sort of like the prophecy with uh, Mark III drone control rigs. <laughs> I think of an interesting sniping fit with sentry drones. Maybe we can find a way to make those work. The flight velocity is also decent, 131 meters per second, which is faster than the Scorpion and faster than the Raven. <laughs> it looks like everything is faster than the Kaldari battleships. What the actual fuck? <laughs> and with a decent amount of high slots, four high slots, three med slots and six low slots. Feels sort of like the Armageddon, but a bit better. <laughs> and I'm highly happy about the ship. If I manage to, I don't know, get the ISK, I'll probably get a Dominix. Because, well, all my skills are in drones, people. <laughs> Moving on to the last battleship, which is the second battleship of the Galenta Federation, and we've got the Megathron. And its stats are, uh, actually, the slot loadout is pretty much the same as the Tempest and the, the Apocalypse. In terms of stats and bonuses, we got a large railgun operation bonus per level, minus 5% large railgun activation time, and plus 5% large railgun tracking speed. So we've got tracking and a DPS increase, and a battleship command bonus per level gives you minus 5% inertia modifier. This one does not have a scan resolution bonus, but it has a better agility and... Um, the speed is 121 meters per second, which is the same as the Scorpion, if I'm not mistaken. This ship is also good for sniping. So basically, the Tech Level 9 uh, sniping battleships are the Tempest, uh, the Megathron, and the Apocalypse. That is the real deal when it comes to alpha damage. This one fits uh, long-range rail guns, while uh, the Tempest fits strike cannons, and the uh, Apocalypse fits beam lasers. So these are mostly the fleets that I'll be seeing uh, flying around in Nolsec when it comes to sniping uh, battleships. I'm highly interested to see how the meta evolves and what people find in terms of doctrines and um, fleet composition, flagships, command ships. There's no command ships modules, but uh, we'll probably see those soon as well as the fleet warfare and the fleet things continue to develop. If you remember Nettie's did indeed increase the fleet number to 51. So that's one step forward, and I'm, uh, I'm wholly anticipating uh, more updates in terms of fleet battles and fleet warfare mechanics. So that's pretty much it in terms of battleships and a uh, quick review of them. Do remember to go into the community tab on this channel and vote for your favorite battleship. Which one uh, do you think it fits best for you? The highest number of votes on the battleship will get reviewed first. We'll show some fits, we'll show some tactics, we'll show some uh, interesting tips and tricks. Maybe help you guys figure out what's best for you. And we've reached that portion of the video in which we announce the next community question of the week. And this week's question is, how would you improve armor tanking? You know, there's been a quite the battle uh, on uh, Facebook, on Reddit. There's uh, not just a battle. Actually, there's evidence all over the place. And we know it. Armor tanking is kind of poop nowadays. For example, almost every fleet... Um, warfare in Nolsec that will be using battleships is most likely going to fit shield tanking, even though the ships are going to be armor tanked like the Apocalypse or the Megathron. They'll be using shield fittings because that is better, even on armor tanking vessels. <laughs> By the way, uh, all the battleships that we reviewed have no armor tanking bonuses. The only thing that they have is more armor hit points, 
but that is irrelevant. If you consider uh, the shield tanking capabilities outmatch the armor tanking capabilities by such a big number. So please leave a comment below and let me know what do you think about how to improve armor tanking. I highly await your comments and uh, good luck. We'll reveal the next two winners on next week, Wednesday or Thursday, depends on when I find time to film more stuff. But that's pretty much it for today. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.